Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we will focus on accepting user input as well as a whole bunch of math functions. And I have a whole lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so it's extremely important to be able to accept input from users, and Python makes it very easy. Basically, the input function, so let's go and demonstrate it here. You're going to say input and what? is your name and what's happening here is the input function is going to display this message right here what is your name and then whenever the user enters a value and then clicks on return or enter on the keyboard that information that they passed in is going to be stored in names so we can then say something like print and hello followed with a comma and name and if we go and run that, you're going to see what is your name, and I can say Derek, and it will say hello Derek. All right, so simple way to accept input. Something that's important, however, is that you can also accept two or more values with the input function. So let's say we wanted to add two values together. All we need to do is say num1 and put a comma, and num2 is equal to, and input, and then we could say enter two numbers. We would then follow that up with split and what split's going to do is it's going to go and take whatever number that lies before a space and store it in here and then the number that lies after the space is going to be stored in num2. Now remember we need to convert this in from a string all input from the input function is always assigned the value of a string and we need to cast it so it's an integer and of course we need to do that with both values then we can come in and add up these values like so of course you're also going to be able to come in and subtract these values as well so difference We'll also be able to multiply values. We'll also be able to come in and divide these values. And we'll be able to come in and get the remainder of these values using what is called the modulus symbol, which is that percent sign you see right there. And you're also going to be able to use a function called the format function. And what it's going to do is match up values where we find these curly brackets. So we can say curly bracket and close that off is equal to and then another curly bracket. And then we'll follow that up with format. And then inside of here, you just list what values you want to put inside of there. So let's just go and do all of them. So what's gonna happen here is this value right here, since it's first, is going to go in the first curly bracket. This one right here is going to go in this one, and so forth and so on. And of course, we're going to be able to do this with all of our math functions. And all we'll need to do, we could do subtract, and then we'll say difference, and multiply, and change this to product. If you're wondering why I have this as someone instead of sum, it's because sum is a special word inside of Python. And we'll be able to divide as well. And we'll also be able to get the remainder with the modulus symbol. Exactly like that. And if we run it, you're going to see that if we come in here and say enter two numbers and we do something like five space and four you're going to be able to perform all of those different calculations and now it's time for you to try to solve a problem so you've learned quite a bit of Python even though this is only the second video so what I want you to do here is test your knowledge now I'm going to have a solution in underneath the video as well as I'm going to show it to you here Try to complete it, however, without watching the solution. And just understand that if you don't get it right, that's perfectly okay. All I'm trying to do with these problems is to get you to think in new ways and then understand the solution. So that's it. So what I want you to do with your program is I want you to ask the user to input the number of miles that they would like to convert into kilometers and you'll then convert those miles into kilometers and you can use this 
fact right here that kilometers is equal to whatever number of miles you have times 1.60934 and then you're going to print out for example 5 miles is equal to 8.0467 kilometers. Okay, so there is your problem and give it a go and see if you can solve it. Alright, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and ask for the number of miles. So I'm going to say enter miles. After I do that, I'm going to convert from a string into an integer. So I'll say miles is equal to int and miles. And you could also put this in, this part right here. Well, let's just do it. I'm going to go and copy this and paste that right there and then paste that parentheses right there. You can do that all on one line if you'd like. Then I want to calculate kilometers. So I'm going to say kilometers is going to be equal to the number of miles times what? Well, this guy right here. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that in. And then I'm going to print out the results. So curly brackets, miles, equals curly brackets again kilometers and then after that we can just come in and say format and miles and kilometers and save it so hopefully you got something like that and I can come in here and it'll say enter miles and I could say five and you can see that I got the results that I expected okay so hopefully you got that right but if you didn't don't worry about it you'll have plenty of opportunities to work on other problems so now what I want to do is talk to you about the math module. Now I'm going to end this tutorial by providing many of the powerful math module functions that Python provides. And a module is just a file that contains a whole bunch of pre-written code. And to go and import the math module specifically, you're just going to say import and math and boom, now you have all of those. Now because you used import, you're going to be able to access all the methods just by referencing the module name. So I'll be able to come in here and I'll go print. And let's say we wanted to get ceiling of 4.4. What ceiling means is basically it's going to round up to the next whole digit no matter what the decimals say right here. And to get those, like I said, you have to reference the module name, which is math. Same as this right here and then ceiling and 4.4 like that and you're also going to be able to get floor which is going to round down and the absolute value for a float just as an example of a couple different functions and you can see how those different guys are going to work for us and there are tons of them there's also the ability to get a factorial and a factorial is just going to be whatever the value is so let's say we go factorial of 4 that's going to be equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. And I went and typed a couple of these in here. You can pause your screen or get the code that's underneath the video. But basically, the factorial is received by going math and factorial, whatever you want to work with. You can get the remainder of a division here with F mod. You're going to be able to receive a float and return an integer with trunk, which of course stands for truncate. Also, you'll have the option to return a power. So this would be 2 to the power of 2, of course. We'll also have the ability to get to the square root of a value. And there's some special values such as E and math directly built into Python. And if we run that, you can see all the different values you're going to be able to get here. So pretty cool to have all those functions directly built into Python. And there's more, of course, you're going to be able to get the log. And what you're doing here is defining the base that you want to use for your log. And you're also going to be able to get the base 10 log just by going log 10. But that's not going to be true for everything. This is just one of the functions that's built inside of there. Most of the time you're going to use this function over this function. And you're going to have the option to get access to a whole bunch of different trig functions as you can see right here. And this is going to be the format you're going to follow whenever you want to use those trig functions. And then finally, you're going to be able to convert radians into degrees just by going math degrees and plugging in your radian. Or you're going to be able to get radians using degrees just by going math radians and whatever the degree is. All right, so there is a quick rundown of some cool things you can do in regards to receiving input from users and a whole ton of math functions. 
and I have a quiz that lies underneath this video that you should go and work with so that you can reinforce everything you've learned today and in the next part of the tutorial I'm going to cover conditional operators. Like always, please leave any questions or comments you have down below.